Hi everyone. In this practice blitz, we're going to be working on vibrato. As I'm sure I don't have to tell you, vibrato is a key ingredient in string playing, right? It's important for projection, in other words, the sheer volume of your sound, for color, and of course, um, the warmth of the sound as well. Some of us learn vibrato intuitively. We just seem to sort of get the hold of it. And uh, some of us come to it through blood, sweat, and tears. But regardless, all of us can stand to spend some of our practice time refining it, working on it, working on different speeds, that kind of thing. The exercises I'm showing you today work for both wrist or arm vibrato. And both wrist and arm vibrato are great mechanisms, by the way. One isn't better than another, so if you've got one going, don't change it. My advice to you in general is to work on vibrato a little bit at a time, but often. Don't overdo it. Staying relaxed is the key, because at the end of the day, vibrato is not a controlled motion, but sort of an uncontrolled motion. It's a kind of um, reflexive action. You set it into motion, and then hopefully it just keeps going. Maybe a few of the tricks in this practice blitz can help you play with that fine line between directing things and letting things go. So the first few exercises are meant to show you how loose the finger joints can and really should be. They are designed for players that already have a vibrato, or they can be used for players that are learning vibrato, or those of you that are relearning your vibrato. All right, the first one I call taps. And uh, we start out by just um, tapping the fingerboard nice and relaxed up at the top. You want to keep your fingers curved while you do this. And I just kind of make it a reflexive motion and I work my way down. So big taps, come down, try to keep the action going, and then try to vibrate. The fingers should be curved and more or less on the string the whole time you're doing that. And you're not really doing a controlled motion of pressing like this, definitely not with the fingers. It's more from the wrist and the whole mechanism. It's just designed to loosen you up so that when you get down there, it's nice and loose. That's taps. All right, the second one I just call slides. It's really common. A lot of you will know about it already, but it's where we slide along the string. And again, we just try to get a really sort of sloppy motion going, automatic, right? I start out big, then I get smaller, smaller, smaller. And then eventually I'll get stuck very lightly on the string. You can do it on all fingers all strings. What's important is that you want your fingers to stay curved and again you just want to feel really light in the hand and and easy going. It's to again loosen up all that mechanism. I'm going to show you that from the other side as well so you can see the curvature of the fingers. So, the third one I call bounce the ball, and I pretend that there's a wall behind me. There is a wall behind me, in fact. But I pretend, basically, that I'm holding a little ball in my hand, something very light, and I put my thumb at the bout, and I just kind of flick it to the wall and back, like I'm tossing a ball and bouncing a ball against the back wall. And what, what is important here is that you're not controlling the in and the out motion but that you're just tossing and letting go so that this can kind of snap back sort of like a rubber band. That action is really useful once you go to vibrato to kind of feel like the hand is moving and responding rather than moving in both directions. That's called bounce the ball. All right, for the next one, you'll need a prop, which is a tissue. Um, in the first version of this, the tissue vibrato, I just drape it over the strings and I just kind of slide the tissue on purpose across the strings back and forth and I actually look for that sound if you can listen to it. Try it on different fingers. And again, you're, you're, you're allowing the hand to move but the tissue just gives you that no resistance feeling. Um, and then I'm going to show you another way, that it's kind of the next step, you, you feed the tissue through the strings.
you can see that I've uh, laced the tissue between the strings and the fingerboard. And the hand is going to move a little bit less. I still let it slide around. I think that's kind of part of the process. And then I start to just very, very lightly vibrate on the string and the tissue stays in place. But it's often a good intermediate point to do this from the tissue over the string so that you don't get really tight. That's tissue vibrato. Next is something I call the Jimi Hendrix. Um, it's, if you have roommates, it's really going to annoy them, but I think it's a lot of fun to do. Basically, and this we are going to use the bow, um, I vibrate purposely on a harmonic and let my fingers slide all around. You're not going to stay put, you're looking again to just loosen the hand. So. And you want it to not sound good. I know that sounds crazy, but. Don't press the fingers all the way down. There should be space between the finger and the fingerboard. That's Jimi Hendrix. So the next one is really good for practicing actually both vibrato and shifts. We're going to take advantage of the fact that when you're shifting, you already have less finger pressure in the fingerboard. As you're, as you're traveling. And we're going to let that be the looseness and the impetus that actually gets the vibrato going. So it goes something like this. You're shifting, and then you're almost like a rubber band. You're starting to toss and let it snap, right? And all the fingers. Right? And fourth finger is often notoriously difficult. You're going to. Let it go when you get there. Those are vibrato shifts. OK, so the next few practice tricks are designed to develop different speeds and widths of vibrato and to learn to control speed and width in real time when you're actually playing. OK, let's talk about um, width and speed. They're unrelated. They're both important. Um, Width usually, we, we try to get a wider vibrato when we're playing louder. With a lot of us, that happens naturally. Sometimes you have to think about it, right? So if I, if I start to vibrate kind of softly, the more you want to project, you do want that vibrato mechanism to open up. Um, also, low sounds, uh, just low pitches, should get sl a slightly wider vibrato than high ones. Um, and speed is really un often goes together with width, but it, technically it's unrelated. So you can have a very fast but wide vibrato, or you can have a slow but narrow vibrato as well. So here's some tips for controlling your size and your speed. Okay, um, basically for me, a bigger vibrato has a looser hand. I feel the looseness in the center of my hand. I try to actually let the other fingers, the ones that aren't vibrating, be really loose, really kind of almost uh, floppy feeling, and sort of separate, so that you don't want to have your fingers all together if you're trying to have a wide swing, because that's going to narrow the base of the hand. And it's going to make you tighter. Okay, So if you're working on getting looser, think about creating extra space in the hand. Right? So the, the extreme of this would be for my fourth finger, which tends to be tight. I'll often come way out with the hand to get that swing, as opposed to staying close, which makes it more narrow. Um, if you're looking to tighten up on your vibrato, and by tight I don't mean physically tight, I mean just make it a little narrower, more refined, I would keep the fingers closer together, closer to the fingerboard and more curved. Right? Yeah. Right? You see, I have more structure in the hand. You can even put fingers together. So just feel a little bit more organized in your hand shape here. You can also play copycat with your fingers. Um, basically, if you have a finger that's doing something that you really like, and you have a finger that's kind of wild and wooly, you can train yourself by putting both fingers down um, and then lifting one to get that same mechanism. So for example, for me, my three right, is pr nice and big. That's how I like it, actually. My two 
tends to be a little bit more wristy. It's a little, I just, just, I'm not crazy about it. Let's put it that way. So sometimes I will put both fingers down together like this on the, on the fingerboard on adjacent strings. I'll play my three. That's the mechanism that I'm looking for in this case. And I'll leave my two down and I try to train that finger to kind of have the same motion. I'll do the same with threes and fours. My three is pretty strong, my four not as much. So you can play copycat. If you have a finger that you really like, you can retrain another finger in, in that image. So those are some tips for controlling um, speed and width. Good luck. The next one I call alternate string. It's really a simple tool to practice vibrato on a string that you're not playing on in order usually to stay relaxed and to be able to focus and not be gripping on the, on the fingerboard. Keeping the thumb loose, not gripping um, in general is really, really important for vibrato. So this is a way you can get there. So basically, let's say I'm going to bow on the D string. I'm going to vibrate all the way up on my fingers on the A string, right? <laughs> It's okay if you hit the string with your fingers, that's all right. You're really just looking, you're trying to trick yourself is what you're trying to do. So vice versa. Right? You're just kind of trying to take advantage of the fact that um, you're not doing it on the string that you're playing on. I don't know why it works, but it seems to. Zingers. This is something that Roman Totenberg did with me at, uh, when I was doing my master's in Boston. It's really simple. I think um, this exercise is all about uh, kind of cross-training. The bow is going to do something very still, and the left hand is going to turn on and off for you to develop that control. So let's say, in my case at the time, I was working on developing uh, kind of a, a narrower vibrato, a faster one also. So you start out by not vibrating, and then you do these little zingers, but not for very long, to get the sound that you want. Or if you want a really big one, that's fine too. But the idea is that you're learning to turn the vibrato on and off with your brain to the hand. It's that connection between the brain and the hand. Those are called zingers. Okay, the next few exercises are designed to work on that mind-body connection that I just mentioned. So you can send the right signal from the brain to the hand and the hand executes it. These should help you vibrate fully and seamlessly without a lot of effort and what's very important without getting tight or tired in the hand. This one is called four fingers one vib. The idea of this is twofold. Number one, um, you're shifting which is always a great thing when you're working on vibrato and number two, you're starting to learn to control the speed and the amplitude, the width of your vibrato um, despite the fact that you're using different fingers. Because because your fingers all have different lengths, they naturally have different speeds. So if you want to counteract that and you want to make them more seamless, this is a good one. You take a pitch. I'm going to pick D in third position just because it's simple. And you're going to go through all the fingers. It's less about intonation, although it's nice if we can play in tune, and it's more about training the ear to get that same kind of sound. So what you don't want, you don't want a situation where one is really wide, right, and the next one is really tight. You're looking, whatever you're looking for, if you're looking for slower or wider, faster, you're looking for that uniformity and to train the fingers to be able to do that. It's a great warm-up exercise, by the way.
Active leaps, always good for practice anyway, so might as well incorporate vibrato in them. Um, what I mentioned to you before is that lower and higher pitches really should get different widths of vibrato, otherwise it's going to sound weird. And you may have heard yourself or some other players have kind of like on the top a, a vibrato that's inherently too slow, that kind of wobble sound, that's because that vibrato for that pitch level isn't right. If you have that vibrato down here, it might sign, sound uh, nice and warm. So this exercise, I'm going to challenge you to work through the octaves and get different speeds. Okay? So we have, let's do A's. Okay? Slow, right? Medium. Fast. And super fast. All right, let's pick a B. Again, we're going to really train the, the brain and the hands to go slow, medium, a little bit smaller and faster, and fastest. This is almost like a finger vibrato. I do it with a straight finger. You can, you can do it curved or straight, but you can go through all your octave leaps like that. It's good for the upper fingerboard anyway and make those adjustments as you go through the pitch range to learn to control your mechanism. And lastly, I would just encourage you to incorporate your vibrato goals into your scale practice. I know we do scale practice often without vibrato for intonation, and that's great, but if you are working on vibrato, you should also find a way to incorporate it into um, your scale practice. Maybe, maybe towards the end of your scales, do some full with full continuous vibrato. Um, whatever you're working on, find a way to work it into your scales. If you're working on, um, you know, being more seamless between shifts, like practicing vibrating before the shift actually happens, then what I tell my students to do is. I get them to not vibrate any of the notes they usually would and only practice the vibrate the one before the shift. So in a G major scale, for example, if that makes any sense. So I try to vibrate. Or if your problem is that you tend not to vibrate after shifts, you, you can do the next one. So dry. So you kind of do the extreme of whatever you're naturally not doing. If you're having trouble with your fourth finger, you can do some scales not vibrating any other fingers, but just when you get to the fourth finger, do that one. If you're working on seamless vibrato, in other words, you're having this issue that many of us have where the vibrato is it's coming and going, it's turning on and off, or it's not there for passing tones, you can pick an uneven ry rhythm and uh, just make sure that you vibrate through. <laughs> So that when you get to that in a piece, you're not as likely to go to have those dry notes in between. So whatever your goals are, stay light, stay relaxed, don't overdo it, but do incorporate it into your scale practice because that's fundamental to everything that we do and is often first in the day. So those are some of the ways that you can work on tweaking your vibrato. Uh, hopefully a few of these, not all of them will work for you, but some of them. I hope will work for you with what you're trying to accomplish. One of the things you'll be wanting to do if you're working on your vibrato is to really analyze in detail the vibrato of other players, players that you admire. Look at their hand. How is it moving? What's the flexibility like? And then when you go to the practice room, you're looking for the same effect, and then you can use some of the drills that I showed you to get there.